the CHGO White Sox podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Welcome into Studio A of our CHGO offices here in the West Loop of Chicago. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Alongside me is Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. Uh, he's got a recent article up about Aloy Jimenez playing the outfield uh, at allchgo.com. And, and a big diehard die hard special today, too. I, I, I'm very, I'm glad you, I, the mood, we'll talk about the mood in a second. Very glad you had that. I, I was very excited to read that, and I just love the uh, the idea that you're just looking at your records. Player, got a lot of records, too. All of your records and just picking out. Uh, no, I, I thought that was a great piece uh, for the diehards there. Uh, and Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Eknerwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. Uh, frazzled, I think, is a, a fair word to describe me today. Uh, we just got done with our CHGO beat meeting at about 1.30 with Kevin, Jake, Casey, us three. Um, and then I saw, I think in the Discord, I went to the Discord because I was going to mention them. I think I was going to let them know that on Wednesday, February 8th, we're going to be having our happy hour. Um, so I think the bears have done this about like three or four times. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's going to be basically three times. Uh, they've done, it's basically like a zoom call and uh, all our diehards will be able to join and ask us questions about the white Sox or whatever. Um, and, and drink I was goose Island and, and drink goose Island. Uh, and I was just going to go to the di discord and be like, Hey, this happened on February 8th. And I think somebody in there s shared the tweet basically saying Mike Clevenger is under investigation, uh, by the MLB, uh, under the joint domestic, Violence, uh, child abuse uh, uh, act, and I feel like I'm I, I'm, I'm double guessing on the uh, what is it uh, the domestic violence, sexual assault, and child abuse policy. Um, so the Athletic released a piece written by Brittany Griholy and Katie Strange, uh, Chicago White Sox pitcher, is under investigation by Major League Baseball following allegations of domestic violence involving the mother of his 10-year-old daughter and 10-month-old uh, daughter and child abuse. Um, Olivia Feinstead is the 24-year-old mother of Clevenger's child, told The Athletic on Tuesday that she has been in contact with the individuals from MLB's Department of Investigations since this summer. And according to Feinstead, she has detailed those to the investigators uh, in incidents of physical, verbal, and emotional abuse including an incident from last June in which Feinstead said Clevenger choked her and another about two weeks later, which he said Clevenger stopped her in a hotel room when the team was playing the Dodgers and threw uh, used chewing tobacco on their child. Um, she has posted more details, photos as well on her Instagram page. Uh, you could check that out for yourself at Olivia Feinstead, um, F-I-N-E-S-T-A-D. Um, the White Sox said they were unaware of this investigation and their statement said MLB baseball and the Chicago White Sox take any and all allegations very seriously. And the White Sox are completely supportive of the joint domestic violence, sexual assault and child abuse policy shared by the MLB and MLB PA MLB open an investigation after learning of these allegations. The White Sox were not aware of the allegations or the investigation at the time of his signing. The White Sox will refrain from comment until MLB's investigative process has reached its conclusion. Um, I think it would be fair to say that we probably will not hear about this investigation unless more reporting uh, is done, unless Olivia herself reveals more information, uh, or until Rick Hahn has to speak at spring training and he has to have some comment of some sort. Uh, however, brief it may be uh, about this situation. Uh, what do you guys make of this entire day so far? Yeah, I mean, it's a horrible thing that happened to this woman. Uh, first of all, I think uh, you've got to um, extend your sympathies to her and uh, certainly commend her for her um, bravery and being able to talk about this in a public forum, which uh, a lot of people who have been in similar situations, um, you know, understandably have, have uh, trouble doing. Um, this is is not good under any circumstances. Um, I think uh, the reactions that you see all over social media that you're seeing in our comments right now from White Sox fans and people who aren't White Sox fans directed toward uh, the person who has been alleged to do this, who currently plays for the Chicago White Sox, um, are, are probably uh, not too far off from some of the thoughts that have gone through some of our heads today. But I think uh, that in... in the interest of uh, responsibility. You've got to make sure to wait until all the facts uh, are, are gathered and uh, all of the um, 
investigating is done and a conclusion is reached until you move on uh, to um, sharing completely formulated opinions or um, talking about what comes next. So uh, I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to talk about baseball uh, in, in light of this. Uh, this is a very serious situation uh, that we've seen play out in uh, different under different circumstances, but uh, you know, with with other players in Major League Baseball, uh, very recently at mm-hmm. that. So um, there is some, if if not uh, uh, an acceptable amount of uh, precedence in terms of how Major League Baseball has handled this, there handled these things in the past. There is some recent precedent uh, that that you can look at, but right now I think it's just wait and see uh, where this investigation goes. You're probably right. The White Sox will uh, probably not comment on this, though I'm sure Rick Hahn will be asked about it when spring training begins in about three weeks, Um, though I'm not sure how much comment he'll be able to make at the time, uh, and I would imagine they'll stick to what they shared in the statement today uh, until something comes along. Uh, I I think something that is important for people to remember is there is a lot of questioning about How did the White Sox, which they shared, not know about this when this came along? Sean, you have some insight that I think is very important to provide to to folks, but I will just draw a quick comparison to what they said after the news of Tony La Russa's DUI arrest uh, uh, occurred, uh, or broke, rather, uh, you know, shortly after he was hired uh, in 2020. Uh, And that was for them to release a statement saying they did know about that when he was hired, so you can at least... um, compare their compare the team's reaction in each of those uh, circumstances even if the situations are very different this time or uh, you know between this and what happened with uh, Tony La Russa. at minimum there is if no matter what which side you fall on at minimum you have to feel for the child 10 month old child is having a a family break apart like his mom is accusing his dad of something heinous. And so no matter what I feel for that child going forward, and I just want that child and her mother, Mike Clevenger himself, to find some common ground for that child to have to move forward in an amicable fashion so that child does not have this trauma on his or her heart going through life because it's a bad thing when accusations are thrown out. So the child is the thing the person that I think about the most bump baseball. The child is an innocent figure in this and so should not be brought into the uh, whole discussion and should be thought of as a person that we need to uh, wrap our arms around and make sure that that person is safe. I, you know, as Vinny said, we all have our personal opinions of what we think, but we got to be responsible about how we say things and how this is meted out because we don't know. What we know is what Sean read. What we think is a different thing. So, you know, if you catch me at a bar somewhere, maybe I'll give you my unedited opinion. But it's not the time for that. It's the time for giving you the facts of what is going on. And the White Sox now have to kind of go through this murky road going forward. And I'm uh, not envious of what's happened uh, this offseason for the White Sox. I you know, I usually would say, hey, hands, I mean, uh, all, all arrows go to the White Sox, but I don't know if they knew. So I don't know if they knew, and I, they, if they did know, I don't think they would ask for this. This is a mess. When we all saw this today, we are all thinking like, man, just terrible. And just a horrible, horrible thing that happened here. And no matter what, it's a bad thing. False, true, either way. It's a bad thing. To the point of Tony La Russa and to the point of knowing that's really what the comments are are talking about as well. Um, Mike Clevenger's agent said, we need to fairly and thoroughly protect our client. And at the time, uh, be respectful of the White Sox and MLB. We need time before responding. Um, And an important part of this is with the policy, um, this is directly from the policy on domestic violence. This was shared by James Fox. Uh, there's a confidentiality uh, part of this. The confidentiality of player information is essential to the success of this policy to ensure that confidentiality is protected. The parties agree to uh, the following 
confidential provisions, and then there's definition and prohibition prohibition on disclosure uh, that you can go read at James Fox 917. But that's the big thing about this is you know, with the domestic violence, it is just right now an investigation. We don't know all of the facts. And I reached out to an MLB agent um, who shared um, agents are not obliged to share if an on, uh, investigation is open. Uh, the MLB doesn't tell teams guys are being investigated uh, and the Players Association does not share in the relationship between the MLB and Players Association. Neither side is obliged to share with the other and generally doesn't. So it is very possible unlike the Tony La Russa situation where the person that hired him was his best friend or a very good dear friend. Um, it is very possible that the White Sox were not told about this until the investigation continued and developed. And there was more information that was revealed in December and obviously January as Olivia herself has come out and continued to speak up and made more information uh, public. So I, I do think these are two completely separate situations, Absolutely. two completely different due dil diligences, two different um pieces of information being released after a signing or a hiring. Um, so I, I do think that, you know, the White Sox, say, White Sox saying, you know, we didn't know about this until after the signing, I think that is plausible. Um, absolutely. Um, so I just, there's not a ton of information to go off of. Um, there is a super chat um, from Stefan Bardo who said, get this trash off the team, uh, go sign another pitcher. I think the White Sox are still reacting and figuring out what to do and how to handle this because, again, a lot of this is now in the hands of the MLB and what their investigation is going to find and lead to. And we saw with the Trevor Bauer um, incident, um, and I believe the Addison Russell, um, not to say incident, but two suspensions, uh, it was MLB-led. Um, so it, it, this, if a suspension is going to happen, it will likely come through the MLB's joint domestic violence policy rather than the White Sox being the moral judge and saying, oh, well, we could see all this public information from Olivia's side and, you know, condemn Mike. Like, I, it's just not their place. That is not the White Sox place as a franchise in the MLB's policy with the Players Association. So um, I, I just think, again... Today is not the day to react. We do need more facts, and uh, it's just a very, very, very unfortunate situation, as Herb laid out. I mean, there's a there's a child's life in the middle of this, and 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 obviously, um, you know, this woman feels harmed and uh, has has proof of it. Yeah, and I, you know, I, when you go, if you do go to this lady's um, Instagram, trigger warning: there are gonna be um, bruises and bumps. So. Know that when you go there, um, just make it sure that, you know, we don't re-victimize other people who have been through the similar situations as she's alleging. So I just want to make sure that you guys, if you're out there watching this right now on YouTube or listening on our podcast, know that the, it is uh, pretty pretty physical and it looks uh, not great. Um, and then I think, who is this? Paul asking in the chat, was there a police report? Um I forget exactly where I saw that there was, but um, there was, I think, for the incident in June. Um, so I do believe that Olivia um, reported this to the police. I will try to continue to find that um, and make sure that there was a police report. But I, I do think I remember reading uh, that there was a police report. Um, so uh, and when we do have more information, we obviously will share that and continue to update you um, on the ongoing development and investigation. Uh, we will take a quick break here and let you know about a couple of our sponsors. Uh, Shady Rays, they never understood why sunglasses were so expensive, so they set out to change it. You don't have to break the bank for quality sunglasses this winter because our friends at Shady Rays have you covered. Shady Rays are premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles cater to everyone and every lifestyle. And the best part about Shady Rays, they have the most insane protection program in all of eyewear, lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us that they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. You dropped it in a lake, off a cliff, anything, they'll replace them. And even with that strong of a protection program, they still manage to make quality that I can tell you when we hold them in our hands. Herb has worn them on his hat before. He's not on today. Not so today. I was, I was thought I could be cute and Tie it in, but he's not wearing them. But uh, we do love our sunglasses, and Shady Rays customers seem to agree with over 200,000 five-star reviews, and they stand behind their product and told our team that it 
uh, if anyone has a problem, they will throw profit out the window and do what it takes to get it right. They offer free returns and exchanges. You either love the shades or Shady Rays will pay them to ship them back. That's it. So exclusively, exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is running their deepest deal of the season. Use code CHGO for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. You can buy one, get one free, and get two pairs for as low as $54. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all their newest and best shades. Also, got to let you know about game time. Uh, no Bulls tonight. Bulls are playing. Bulls are in Indiana, though. Ah, so You have to drive all the way down I-65 to, go see, the, to go see the Bullies tonight. I mean, what, 610, I think? When's the game start? 610? 610. Nah, you would have had to leave about an hour ago. Brutal. Mm-hmm. But hey, yeah. maybe you're closer. Maybe you're not, you know, in the West Loop. Uh, <laughs> game time is the hottest new ticket site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. If you ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought you could, the 50 yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats at a concert, it is possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats you never thought you could buy. My girlfriend just recently told me, she's like, I, th- I want to go to con- more concerts this year. Um, so, obviously, I'm going to be using the Game Time app a lot more. Uh, there you go. If, if she's giving me that idea, I should probably take that hint. Um, so, now i got to be looking into what concerts to go to. I know uh, Coco and Claire Claire will be uh, here in uh, April. I know you two don't know Coco oh, and that's Claire my, Claire. My favorite. That's why I, that's why I brought them up. Uh, you guys going to any concerts this year? Eventually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any The National, John? What? Are they, are they coming? Or are they They're opening festivals? their tour. Opening the tour May 20th and 21st at the Chicago Theater. Oh. Tickets on sale this weekend. This I'm weekend? A, or if you're a member of the fan club, I'd probably earlier. Ooh, probably I'm going to reach so. out to my friends, see if anyone's a member of their fan club. I'd like to, but if not, I'll get I'll get the game time tickets. I mean, I mean I'm trying to go to the new edition concert. Where's that at? United Center. Oh, nice. When's yeah. that? March, sometime in March, early in March. 1986. And hey, uh, well, when when you get all closer, six of them too. Uh, Bobby Brown's going to be there again. The last minute price drops can be found. So if you want to wait till Do you March, know who Bobby Brown is, Sean? Uh, yeah, he was married to Whitney. Wow, that, that's that's his uh, claim call. to fame. Married to Whitney. Well, and so he had, that's literally and the first thing I would have said. So the cool, and, the and yeah. he also had a, a prerogative. <laughs> it was his, and he was in the band New Edition. From mm-hmm. what I see, I, 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 I my knowledge stopped after the. Being married to Whitney See, Houston and being out of reality That's, show. that's the one part like you guys never talk about. You always talk about movies and TV shows, music, especially one you're hit right, wonders I, I from ne- the eighties. You're 80s. right. I never talk about music, Sean. You're yeah, right. no, but like one <laughs> hit wonders from the eighties. You're more of like one a hit wonder. Yeah, I brought I brought this up. I quoted Vinny's uh, Die Hard piece today by saying I just did this with my record collection, and all it was was Billy Vera and the Beaters uh, by request. Yeah, and I had no idea what that meant. Right. Yeah. Uh, he he sung at this moment. Uh, hey, real quick, getting back to game, game time. If we have any, like, if we have any uh, <laughs> viewers from the region, perhaps maybe they can get to Indianapolis. Eight in bucks, the, eight bucks to sit upstairs. Eight eight bucks. That. That's a beautiful uh, stadium too. That's eight dollars. Yeah. Love whatever Contigo Fieldhouse is called. Then, <laughs> yeah, um, Gainbridge now. Yeah. Gainbridge. Ooh. Wow. So they've even changed this since the last time I was there. It was Banker's yeah. Life Fieldhouse. Oh, yeah. I Banker's went Life. to yeah. a yeah. Uh, trash, a, trash. a job fair at, at that Fieldhouse, um, the Indiana Pacers job fair. Um, it was the day after the Super Bowl. And the city of Indianapolis was dead. I think we were the only 40 people in that city, and we were occupying the bank house, and everybody else was completely vanquished. You try to go into lunch and, you know, not cobwebs, but the, uh, you know, dust. Tumbleweeds. Tumbleweeds. Yeah. Uh, roll down the streets of Indianapolis. But, hey, maybe you're uh, near, and uh, you can get tickets for, like, 8 bucks to go sit in Section 207. Uh, again, Game time was created by the fans for the fans. Guarantees the lowest price. Uh, not only Bulls, Blackhawks, but also concert tickets as well. If you love CHGO, then you'll love Game Time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets to the link in the description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app to score the best seats to all your favorite events. What you cut me off when I was going to bring up my Billy Vera knowledge? Yeah, you, sorry. You, I just, I, we're in the middle of an ad read. I thought. What was could... the Michael J. Fox uh, show that he was in? Silver Spoons. No, no, the the one where he was young. Family, family ties. ties. Yeah, Family Ties. Uh, uh, that Mike. That, that move, that yeah. song Alex at this Keaton. moment uh, plays oh my when, God, when I, the Alex Keaton and the, those people I get just together. Said Michael J. Fox and Silver Spoons. Of course, that was Rick Schroeder. What am I thinking? That's Unbelievable, terrible. Law. terrible. Sorry I've never heard long. of Silver Spoons. Don't worry. Ah, oh, great show. No, same. Oh. Um, no idea. You never heard of Silver Spoons? No. Oh my God, it was great. So Ricky Schroeder. Yeah, Ricky Alfonso, Schroeder. Alfonso Ribeiro. Exactly, and he in the in the credits, he's riding around on a, a little, little train, train inside the house. They were rich. Silver Spoons. Yeah, baby. he was like his mom either. Died or something, and he went to live with his rich dad. Oh, and super his, um, rich. They had great hair, that And guy. his mother-in-law. So he was the Fresh Prince before the Fresh Prince. He was. <laughs> before he was, you know, the Fresh Prince's cousin or whatever. Well, Alfonso wasn't the rich. I mean, he was a rich kid, but 
Ricky Schroeder was the rich kid. Oh, I see. The gotcha. silver spoon, if you would. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks, Herb. Here we are, um, face to face. Sorry, yes. I'm trying to a couple I, of silver spoons. I was trying to just source <laughs> uh, where I found the police report uh, mention for the Clevenger thing before we close that out. Um, I and think, I do uh, think it was on Olivia's Instagram story. I did share the screenshots of that. If you do want to see those, uh, at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Um, she had about uh, eight uh, stories length uh, talking today, uh, detailing some of those things that uh, uh, she went through. So, um, and I think she be- she mentioned the police report there. Um, sorry, were you, ta- you want to go back into the eighties? Uh, that was a, quite the yeah. Mood I know. Sorry, right no, there. What's what's next on the uh, on the on the show docket? Well, Menudo's uh, been asked, so that's another eighties band. Menudo's Menudo. It's not just a soup. That's it's right. A great, great Mexican band. Starring, uh, of course, a Puerto Rican Ricky Martin. That's correct. <laughs> okay, um, well, let's get into uh, <laughs> let's get into Loya Menace playing in right field. We do have a super chat. Uh, There's a kids band. Kirk saying so. Davis Martin season anybody? Uh, I mean, I was you don't know I yet. was just assuming that the White Sox were probably going to sign more starting pitcher minor league depth when that whole market figured and sorted itself out. Their plan A was Clevenger, and now with the way that the market has closed up because they were early on that signing, uh, it seems like they wouldn't have their plan B or plan C option like Jock Peterson compared to Adam Eaton. It seems just because they thought they had that spot filled, you know, that market's kind of dried up, so they'll probably have to get creative, and they'll probably, you know, just be figuring it out at this point. Well, and, and, we and again, we, we, we just don't know how this is going to play right. out. We don't know if he uh, – we don't know – whether uh, the league is, is planning a suspension while the investigation continues. We don't know if they would wait to take any action until the investigation concludes. We don't know uh, whether that would involve uh, him missing any time or not missing any time. We don't know how long that's going to take. So um, while we said earlier, I'm sure that the White Sox and, and Rick Hahn would, would not comment further on this uh, investigation once spring training comes around, it's a very valid question to ask how that impl- impacts their baseball plans uh, for at least the beginning of, of or however long of the 2023 season. That's not, I think, what any of us are thinking about right now. We're, you know, this is obviously very fresh and very new today, um, and there's a lot about this that has absolutely nothing to do with baseball. And I think uh, once we have some more answers, some more information, uh, and some more of a timeline, for, for lack of a better term, that's when we can start getting into the baseball stuff. Yeah, uh, well, you did lay out the timeline for spring training and stuff. Uh, I, I did. I did realize this. I think we have now uh, twenty-five shows until the first spring training game. We have thirty-one days until spring training starts. Um, like f- no weekends Maybe until the first cactus first game. league game. First, first game. Remember, they are at spring training for mm-hmm. almost two weeks yeah, for, before yes. the games mm-hmm. start. Yeah. Um. So, like, what I, I think the date that you told me was the the. 12th for the pitchers and catchers for the WBC right so you know well that that we're getting real close we're getting real real close to to baseball I'm I'm, I'm real excited February that 12th that's Super Bowl Sunday in Arizona okay it so is. maybe it's the 13th wow yeah, um, it's, it's after that maybe, yeah. maybe maybe they get the Super Bowl <laughs> off um but yeah uh let's talk about uh something that we're gonna have more of a timeline and more information on uh Alloy playing right field uh, it's been an odd topic to talk about because it hasn't been super clear on what the plan is uh he might play play there one or two times a week uh, according to Pedro Grafal on inside the clubhouse uh on six seven the score uh but he's told Vinny uh some other stuff and and Aloy had his own comments yesterday um we did play one comment specifically but I want to just play this kind of super cut of Aloy talking about uh, right field, and the first question was, uh, has the coaching staff talked about him embracing the DH position, and here's his answer. Uh, well, not really. Um, we were talking, uh, and he just said, he, the, well, I was talking to the manager, and he, and he said uh, that I, that we're going to be more in the right field than left field uh, because uh, Benny Tendi is here now. Um, but we don't talk about DH a lot. So that was one of the things. 
I know it's your desire to play outfield, but if you were asked to DH, would you and spend most of your time DH, would you embrace that role as DH? Uh, I don't know because, like I say early uh, last year, because I was DHing more than the outfield, it was because I got surgery. And uh, and I understand that, uh, but this year I've been working really hard to play in the outfield more than the age. So uh, I don't I don't really think uh, that I'm gonna accept it because if I'm working hard, it's because I want to get better and I want to play in the outfield. So interesting stuff there from Malloy, just on what the conversations have been with Pedro Grafol. Um, but Pedro also told you what he's talked about with Rakan about uh, Aloy playing the outfield and what he's told uh, Aloy. So what did he tell you? Yeah, well, if you'll remember during the Andrew Benintendi introductory press conference. Media cycle. Pe- Pedro was uh, uh, asked about Aloy, you know, hey. That guy sitting next to you, he's your left fielder now. Does that mean Aloy is the full-time DH? Uh, and Pedro uh, set everyone's uh, brain buzzing by mentioning Aloy Jimenez in right field in the same sentence. Uh, so I asked him to kind of talk about that a little more when we sat down after the press conference. And he said to me, Aloy's a dynam- dynamic offensive player. Everybody knows that he can be one of the best offensive players in the game. Benny comes in. He's a left fielder. That's what he's always played. In speaking to Rick, Aloy has also had some experience in right field. I think when he signed, he was a right fielder. I talked to Aloy. He's all in. He's a professional. He knows what we're trying to do. And I told him, obviously, Benny's coming here to play left field, and I need you to continue to practice in left, play some right field, just in case there's a need out there in right field. And he said, whatever it takes to win baseball games. I'm in this thing to play October baseball. That's what this is about. And I said, that's all we need to hear. Our job is to keep Aloy in the lineup throughout the whole year, and if we can do that, if he can stay healthy, I know he'll have a big year for us. That doesn't quite sound as severe as as the reaction has been, obviously, um, but some things have come up since then. He, he talked to 670 The Score, did Pedro Grafal, and said he'd like to see Aloy in right field once or twice a week. And then, obviously, we had the comments from Aloy himself yesterday. Um, it It doesn't sound like it's, you know barreling toward Aloy Jimenez is going to be a regular right field fixture. Um, But that being said, as I wrote today and as we talked about yesterday, there's still so much unknown when it comes to Oscar Colas, and maybe that's just a factor of him being someone who hasn't played Major League Baseball before, that uh, it's hard to see the possibility uh, you know, of Aloy being out there or or anybody being out there that isn't Oscar Colas uh, completely going away. My thoughts on this Aloy situation have been just marinating through my mind. It's like, why did we give away Jose Abreu if Aloy Jimenez is going to be in the outfield sometime? We could have had all three of these guys. We could have had Aloy Jimenez. We could have had Andrew Vaughn. And we could have had Jose Abreu. That's what I'm mad about. Because the thing is, you wanted to get Andrew Vaughn out of the outfield. That was the main problem, right? Because he was terrible there. And so to do that, you need to get Jose Abreu off first. Cool, let him go. So my understanding is like since you did this, that means Aloy is out of the field and he's more DHing. And it might eventually turn out to be that. But right now I'm thinking about like we didn't replace the production of Jose Abreu and now we're going to have a similar team without him just replacing him with Andrew Benintendi who's not going to replace the numbers that Jose Abreu put up there. And we talked about the void of leadership that's left by Jose Abreu. That's where I'm at right now. It's like either you talk to Aloy and made him understand, hey, man, it's cool that you want to play outfield. You should want to play outfield. As Sleepy Harold says, a 26-year-old guy should not want to just be retired to be a DH. That's understandable on his part. Mm-hmm. I don't blame Aloy at all. He should want to play the outfield because that's how he gets down. And I've seen him make plays in the Futures game in San Diego where he jumped over the wall and almost injured himself. Great play. But, yeah, but he was also like – 21. Yeah, but it was not, it's not like we didn't have to get rid of Jose Abreu. Or if you just wanted to get Jose Abreu off the team, cool, because the number was too high, 
there was other fielders. There was uh, Mike Conforto available. There were other right fielders. Michael Brantley was available, who was more of a left fielder. But you could have said to people, okay, Michael Brantley is our right fielder. And we were like, all right, that's fine. You had uh, Pollock at right field, penciled in right field last year. That would be an upgrade from what that is. So I just don't know where their offseason plan was if this is just going to lead to Aloy playing a decent amount, not majority, a decent amount in outfield. You could have just kept Jose, or you could have went and got another player that supplements what Jose did and have Aloy sprinkle in in left field, sprinkle in in right field one, once in a while, but for the most part, playing designated hitter. So that's why I'm disappointed. And you could have, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me to lose Jose Abreu and just have the same situation going on this year that you had last year. I think it's interesting to think about, like, all seven of those players, like the core six plus Andrew Benatendi on the team at the same time, and Andrew Vaughn and Gavin Sheets being the DH. And I think that goes back to, again, when Aloy hurt himself in spring training. Like, that was supposed to be the plan. Aloy was supposed to be the left fielder for this team, and Andrew Vaughn and Gavin Sheets were supposed to be the lefty-righty DH platoon. And they were supposed to, you know, be the young guys that didn't have to do too much besides hit. Because Pollock if, was going to be the everyday right fielder. Right. right. Um, and then, well, here here goes Aloy, you know. And, and it's just like, I don't understand the one part from Pedro. Like, it seems like Aloy still wants to advocate for his ability to play the outfield. But in talking to Aloy, it seems like Pedro isn't worried about if Aloy has to play DH. It says, you know, it's all about winning baseball games. Um, so if Aloy has to play DH to win baseball games, and that's what, what's best for the team, I think Aloy Jimenez will do that. But oh, also, well, yeah. like, what's he going to do? Sit on the bench? Right. Well, right. But, yeah. And also, too, like, I think the part of this, <laughs> no. this conversation, too, is like, I don't know if we need to give Aloy too much power in this situation because, again, it's like the White Sox can say no and hold him back from that situation. It's just like when you talk to Jimmy Lambert and him saying, I want to be a starter. Of course you do. You want to get paid more. Starters get paid more than relievers. Outfielders get paid more than DHs. Like, I, I don't think that's also a possibility of this angle for Aloy Jimenez and not faulting him for that. You should be able to get paid as much as you want. And you see Aaron Judge getting $365 million. Well, if he could play the outfield and you could play the outfield and hit just as good as him. Um, you know, we look at the second half numbers when Aloy was healthy. He was up there with uh, Aaron Judge with uh, weighted runs, created plus numbers. Like, of course, he's going to be like, oh, that number is real nice. I'd like that number for myself. Like, he sees himself as a top baseball player, and I think that's why he is, is kind of advocating for himself. I just don't know what it actually is going to end up being. Like, I don't know what the, the platoon's going to end up being, but I do want to more talk about was it possible for the White Sox to add Andrew Benatendi and have Eloy Jimenez actually play right field because Pedro says he's talked to Rick Hahn and – has talked about Aloy Jimenez's ability to play right field. Um, 111 career minor league games for Aloy in right field. Yeah, that's again, the experience. I don't. I again, I, I don't think this is something where people are. You know, I, I really don't see this ending up with Aloy Jimenez being like the right fielder. No, mm -hmm. the the possibility is out there, and I think that's why there's reason for these questions and conversation because we don't know what Oscar Colas is going to do. And we don't know what he's going to do in spring training, and there's a possibility that he doesn't prove himself ready for that kind of a, a job. And then you got to go to plan B, which at this case might be Aloy. But I, I think right now the main reason that Pedro's saying what he's saying, that Aloy is practicing playing right field, it's about flexibility. It's about versatility, and it's about uh, – Oscar Colas does great, wins the everyday job. Congratulations, Oscar Colas. But guess what? Sometime in June, he rolls his ankle, and he's got to go on the I.L. for 10 days. So someone's got to go play right field. Boy, wouldn't it be nice if you could take your best hitter and keep him in the lineup, and right. he can help you out in right field. And wouldn't it be great to get, like, three at-bats from Aloy Jimenez where you can have Andrew Vaughn be the D.H., Aloy play the outfield and right field, Ben Attendi play left field, and then Billy Hamilton or Jake Marisnik or whomever can play the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning as a defensive replacement. You right? could do like, that. Isn't that how baseball works? You know? Well, yeah. I mean, as much as everybody wants to do this video game style and set nine guys in order and say, all right, that's it, every day for 162. Stamina off. Stamina off. Injuries off. <laughs> Stamina is not off in real life. And so uh, you're going to see a hundred something different lineups. That's what every team in baseball does. Um, you know, the teams that win the World Series do that, and the teams that finish last do that. It's, it's, it's just the way it works. And so um, there are going to be days when Yasmani Grandal needs to DH. 
There are going to be days when they need that when they want to give that DH spot to Gavin Sheets. I mean, I'll ask you this right now. If Oscar Colas gets a day off in right field, I'm not talking about who has the least chance of getting injured. I'm saying who's better defensively in the outfield, Aloy or Gavin Sheets? Aloy Jimenez. I mean, I don't yeah, I don't I think I think Gavin's more competent. No. Aloy's a better athlete. Gavin's more competent. No, I like when Aloy plays the outfield, I don't mind him playing the outfield on routine fly balls. The problem with Aloy is the injuries. I don't care about the actual player playing left or right field. That's the only concern I have for Aloy. And I know people in the White Sox organization don't like him labeled as injury prone, but damn it, he is injury prone. Well, no, well, you, don't even have to, you don't even have to call him that. You can just say, let's look at what has actually happened. Yeah. He's gone to the IL three times, once missed months in a row, for things that happened while he was playing left field. Yeah. You don't have to call him injury prone. I mean, he might not be injury prone. It, it might just be bad luck, and that's what you can call it. I mean, it's I not don't think about it's a, being like a, injury like a prone a derisive term. It's just the facts. He is. Well, but you don't even – my point is you can make your point without even using that word. Okay. You don't even have to get into the argument of whether he is or not. You can just say – you know, Aloy Jimenez has injured himself multiple times playing left field. Maybe he would have a lower chance of repeating such a thing if he didn't play the field as much. Ever. <laughs> that would be my thing. But <laughs> the, the, White Sox are, so, the White Sox are, I don't know why they're not being harder on this. And I know it could just be a smoke screen, As Vinny says, hey, just be flexible. Be ready to go. We're not going to take your glove away from you. We're going to be still counting on you to play right field or left field. Pedro even used the term, just in case. Yeah. Just in case they, you needed him in right field. And when that's, when that's what he said, I'm like, well, that makes sense. Just in case. You don't want Edwin Encarnacion as your DH where you can't play him in the field anywhere. But, you know what I mean? You have Aloy Jimenez, and yeah, he's the DH, but he can help you in a pinch. And this is the, the only reason I say it is because past the prologue, the White Sox have had – people in the outfield that shouldn't be in the outfield last year. And so I don't want them saying something now, and then when the season goes on, something else happens. Where Aloy's playing right field for the majority of the time. I'm like, I don't like that. I, don't think he, I, I do don't, not like that. Like, uh, He won't be if, playing the majority if, of the time. If Oscar Colas is not Oscar Colas that we expect him to be in spring training, or he comes up here and he is not good, Who's playing right field? The, 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 it, I don't think it'll be Aloy. I think they still need a Gavin DH. Sheets? It could be Gavin Sheets. That's it could not be good Lira either. Garcia. It could be Jake Marisnik. It could None be Victor of Reyes. Good. None of these are good. I never said they're good, but that's who it could be. Like, we talked about the estimation of Pedro Grafal saying one to two weeks for Aloy. Like, I don't know why. Like, why is their plan B rushing their best player into, a, 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 a like, a tough situation? Like, him parting, being part of that solution, sure, but him being the solution, that makes no sense. That's, they, here's the loss goes down or whatever. Here's the thing. I said this yesterday. I, it was, it was the crux of my story today. It's not surprising that Aloy was talking about playing at the outfield yesterday. It is surprising that we're talking about it, and not because we know better or right. every White Sox person knows better. It's because the White Sox went and made Aloy Jimenez the left fielder obsolete. They went out and they got Andrew Benintendi and they said, well, sure, you're a left fielder, but we've got a better one. Right. Why don't you go DH? No, now it's why don't you DH and play some right field? They could have made Aloy Jimenez the right fielder obsolete too. Mm -hmm. And maybe they will. Maybe Oscar Colas will do that. But right now, while we're still three weeks from spring training and we have nothing else to talk about, you know, they haven't done that yet. And, and so this well, is still a conversation until it isn't anymore. And that's the thing is yeah. it's, it's why you haven't seen is Jimmy Lambert, the, the fifth starter for the white Sox because the white Sox aren't opening that door. Like they're not talking about him possibly being a, a starter or anything like that. Right? Like Jimmy Lambert can say that all he wants, or Tanner Banks could say that he wants to be a starter. All he wants. Um, Aloy saying he wants to play right field is backed up by something the manager said. Like the manager has right. mentioned right field. And apparently Rick Hahn has been like, no, he has minor league experience. And again, 111 games in the minor leagues with the Cubs and White Sox. Last experience, though, was when he was 20. And now he's had surgery that made him very, uh, what, t not tepid? Tepid? Uh, yeah, tepid? Tenuous. No, no, like talk about like, timid no. or yeah, timid, timid. Like, timid. There we go. Timid. Tentative. Wow, play, this has been a this has field. been a round of vocab practice like with the going CH, through Roger's CHGO White uh, Sox <laughs> podcast. But to Vinny's point, 
And that showing, was well, my, no, a showing little enthusiasm. Like when I was watching mm, at, at Elvis Night, bit. August twenty sixth. Let's set the scene. Section one sixty one. Uh, what, what's the two beers? Uh, what's the Bleacher and Brews? Uh, oh, Bleacher there? and Brews uh, section. I was there. Okay. Uh, Rick Camp sat in for me, uh, and, and you guys hung out here. And it was the that. Seth Brown night, I think. Uh, but there was a ball. Aloy's playing left field. It's hit down the line, and you just see Aloy just be like. And just like, and then he like sprints, but it's not even like a sprint, like, cause he has to be wary of his surgically repaired leg. And like, he was playing right field when he wasn't dealing with a surgically repaired leg. We see when they're out in Oakland during the postseason that he's dealing with uh, knee soreness. Like Andrew Vaughn just suffered through so much because he was running around in the outfield. Why are we just close that door? Like that's, that's all I want. It's like, he's not a right fielder. That's why he stopped playing right field in the minor leagues before he came up and made his debut. Like, I just don't get the right field conversation. If you wanted to say, like, he'll spell Andrew Benatendi and Benatendi will play right field, sure. But even Benatendi's played 29 games in right field in college and well, hasn't played there since. I think the idea is that they're planning on Andrew Benatendi doing what, doing what he's done in the past and playing 150 games in left field. And so the idea is maybe no one needs to spell Andrew Benintendi in left field. That's a perfect world, obviously. Guys go on the IL all the time for little baseball injuries and, and stuff. But he, He's only played over 150 games once. That was 2017, 148, 138, uh, and then 134, 126. Yeah. Or well, and total games. Played. Listen, I'll say this when it comes to Aloy in right field. How many times have I stared down this camera and said, hey, guys, Elvis Andrews has never played second base before in Major League Baseball? Stop asking for him to be signed to be the second baseman. Aloy Jimenez has never played right field in Major League Baseball before. Did he not learn with Andrew Vaughn? <laughs> this is why I wanted either the right fielder to be signed, some professional right fielder to be signed, or a second baseman. Because now, as it currently stands, you've got two unproven commodities in right and second base, as always going for the White Sox again. So it's just so frustrating that we're back here talking about similar things instead of like, man, this team's complete. All we need is health. If that would be the best conversation of us having here. Man, if the White Sox stay healthy, we're golden. And you know what, though? Still that. That might still be true. <laughs> still that. And my guy's saying go Guardians. Go and find his uh, scooter. Go and find your man's scooter. T <laughs> Tito Francona, Cleveland. Come on, man. Where's Stop Tito's stealing scooter? Stop stealing his scooter. How's it going to get around? Um, uh, by the way, I just started a poll on our YouTube for any commenters or what's whatever. What's the poll? It said, would it be okay seeing Eloy play right field? I'm going to go ahead and guess the results of that law. What is it? I'm going to say that uh, bordering on 90% of no's. So far we have, th oh, I was going to say we had 13 votes and they were all no's, but we're up to 15 now and we have a yes. So uh, 93 to 7 at the moment. Okay, so wow. yeah. Nailed it. 88-12. Oh, boy, the, I the yeses voted. are coming. 88-12. Do oh, we have you that say one? yes. Of course I do. <laughs> um, do we have <laughs> that one stat graphic that I shared with you in uh, Slack yeah, about the six core players? We do, Sean You Anderson. know what, Lawrence? I'd love to flash that. Uh, this is from Jake uh, Kuda uh, on Twitter, uh, and this was shared on August 2nd when the White Sox were going to finally get their core six players all ready for Texas. And Jose Brady was healthy. Tim Anderson was healthy. Yasmani Grandal back healthy. Loy Jimenez healthy. Yohan Moncada healthy. Luis Robert healthy. They played three games. And then Tim Anderson was out for the rest of the season. Uh, and the White Sox, when they had five of those guys in the lineup, they had a 56.5% win percentage. When they had four of those guys in the lineup, they had a 55% win percentage. So I think your question of, like, why not have all seven guys be a fair question? Because isn't that more insurance? Isn't that more protection? Because then if Aloy Jimenez does get hurt uh, and, and he can't play in right field, well, you still have six more good to great MLB players to back him up. Like, I, I do think that your question, Herb, of, uh, you know, if, if Aloy could play right field this whole time, like, why wasn't that worked into the plan? Um, like, I, I just, I, I don't understand the whole back and forth about this. But. <sighs> just so frustrating. I, I wish that this team could find some consistency, either bad or good, because this middling, this 81 and 81 team, the, the roller coaster just goes straight. <laughs> as Vinny put the it world's last worst year. roller coaster. Just, uh, like, I could deal with a team just being crappy. The Bears, awesome season. The worst team in football, awesome. You get the first draft pick. 81 and 81 leaves you nowhere. It's just, meh, mediocre. And that's what the White Sox have been for most of my life. I want them to be either great or the worst team ever. And it's looking like they're going to be another 
meh team again. And if they don't get consistency with their players in the lineup, it's going to be like 2022 again. Are you what freaking happened? out just for an interest? Yes. Just for a team expressing interest? Yes. Wow. Shout oh, out to Akota, Akota uh, uh, for oh. sharing this. Uh, per Ken Rosenthal, White Sox have expressed interest in trading for Royals infielder Nicky Lopez. Sources tell The Athletic. You're way too excited. Royals not <laughs> eager to move Lopez, viewing him as, as important depth. Team plans uh, is to go with Witt at uh, shortstop, Massey at second base, Lopez as a utility player. But Lopez could be open at second base if Massey is not ready. <laughs> if Massey's not ready, bring him here. They're both local guys. Come on. What's Sean is, Nicky Sean Lopez is, is from Naperville. Let's, what, let's, let's reset the scene here. Sean is basically jumping up and yes. down for, for this report. White Sox it's interested in trading for someone. Team not interested in trading like, that no, person. Good. <laughs> bad day. He's I mean, not even that good. Nikki Lopez isn't even that good, but he's he, from here. And he that's great. was good in 2021. I think he had like a four or five war F4. I, Let's uh, go. I visited the, uh, him on the, squad. the 16-inch softball Hall of Fame mm -hmm. over in Forest Park where and he his was there? dad has a brick. Oh. Or his, his dad is part of the... See, and then band. if Nicky Lopez is a White Sox, we can interview his dad about softball. He could be on our softball team. I mean, imagine how good our softball team is going to be when we have Nicky Lopez's dad on it. I mean, we I mean, could still have him He might be on his right softball now. team this right now. This is amazing. He could be amazing. on your softball team now. We could, I mean, he didn't move to Kansas City. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Nicky Lopez's dad hit me up. And um, Nicky Lopez got engaged here in Chicago. Of course he did. He's a, he's a local product. From Naperville Central. I don't local, know if you knew. North. No. Naperville North. I Naperville Central. North. Uh, well, that's I what that person said. That person's wrong. Central. It's Central. Yeah, Candace, oh, I know wow. my former DVC yeah. people. Candace Parker, Nicky Lopez, they're wow. from the same school. Ryan according, to, according to Wikipedia, Lopez attended Naperville Central. Central. He's there a Red Hawk. Central. Someone tell Alec S. Um, come on, Alex. Come, come Alec on, S. come on, Alex. Uh, first off, uh, I, I did have to check Instagram today. Uh, my guy, Alex, S., that I just found out today, proposed to his girlfriend. Congratulations. So now he's got a fiance. How exciting. Uh, so I was going to reach out to him a little bit busy with the whole news today. Uh, but hey, Alec, uh, why not do it right now? Uh, congratulations, Mazel. Uh, you're not. Congrats. And, uh, still maybe yeah, that's still. why you're a little distracted about the Naperville North. It's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, but hey, I'd be, I'd be he thrilled got, to he get He got Nikki engaged Lopez today on the South Side. or yesterday? Uh, I checked Instagram today. Okay. So, so, are, been a so week. this either could be his, weeks old. Either his <laughs> I see. I was going to say, either his first or second day as an engaged man, and he's he's watching live the CHGO oh, White Sox he's podcast. A, he's a diehard. He's a, he's a, he's a great <laughs> fan. Uh, he's a, he's a, out in Kansas City. Yeah. Or, uh, at least the Nikki Lopez area. in 2021 had a 5.9 F4. Yes, bring him here. Yeah, local kid. But, the, but the, you I know mean, what? He could be bad at baseball, and but he's local. That's Royals, all I care about. The Royals would be like, no, we get don't. Mike Massey here. Like we, I know we traded Michael A. Taylor to the Twins, but making all these trades inside the division to, for these teams to be better than us is not what we want to do. Unless you're giving up some serious prospects. I'm lit up, uh, just like ComEd uh, can light up your life. Uh, the ComEd Energy Efficiency <laughs> Program works. is committed to helping families and businesses and the communities we serve and manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. ComEd offers a wide array of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across our territories. Customers can inquire about how to upgrade outdated lighting to energy and money-saving efficient LED lights. Learn more about network lighting to operate your lights through your mobile device and track your facility's energy usage and more. Incentives have recently increased for indoor-outdoor lighting and network lighting controls, making these projects even more cost-effective than before. So visit comed.com slash powering B-I-Z. That's comed.com slash powering biz. Now to start saving money and energy and start a project, contact us at 1-855-433-2700. For more information, email businessee at comed.com or publicsectoree at comed.com. Also got to let you know about our friends over at FOCO. Brought up Andrew Benatendi already. He was playing right field in college. If you want an Ar Arkansas Andrew Benatendi bobblehead, uh, FOCO's got you covered. Chicago, you've already got the best coverage for your favorite uh, team, so get fitted in the best sports gear around. FOCO has you covered from Soldier Field to the front room, north or south side, with hoodies, slippers, signs, bobbleheads, and everything in between. Again, you got the Andrew Benatendi Arkansas bobblehead out there. Woo Pig Suey, of course. Uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, the Dallas Keuchel Gold Glove bobblehead out another, there. Another another um, hog, and probably your some of your favorite, uh, you know, White Sox like Louis is Robert, there, is Aloy there Jimenez, James, Tim is there James McCann. Can you complete the set of, of University of Arkansas? Alums I'll slash White Sox alums. Let's see. James McCann. Yes, they're oh, but it's Mets. But you can get in the black jersey. 
The black Mets jersey. The black Mets there jersey. And, and he's smiling. I mean, look about at him. A, he seems so happy to be a Met. How about well, a, he seems so happy to have that contract. How about contract. a Brett Bielema, Arkansas? You want a, a coach? Yeah. A, a coach? <laughs> Biel- no, there's Brett Hart. Oh, oh the hitman. Yeah. He's a big head bobblehead. Oh, you know Brett screwed cool. himself? Huh? Brett screwed himself. Brett did screw himself. Yeah. Wow. Uh, he's the, but he was also the best there was, I the best there is, and the best there ever will be. Um, anyways, uh, going to finish it up. Uh, <laughs> check out FOCO.com or click the link in the description below. That's F-O-C-O.com or click the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Use promo code CHGO for 10% off. Uh, let's just do one final thing to uh, UniWatch. Uh, dot com. The great Paul Lucas uh, had some leaked spring training hats. You won't find these on Foco.com, and thankfully, because uh, they won't sell uh, to anyone. These are ugly, ugly, ugly hats. I don't know why every single year the spring training hats are ugly. Sometimes they get it right, but most times they don't. Uh, I think you, Vinny, earlier said they look like trucker hats. Well, they are trucker hats. Look <laughs> at them. But they like they look like the old school like you know like seventies trucker hats when they first invented trucker hats mm-hmm. and they got like the f- white yeah. foam on the front. BJ and the Bear, let's go. Yeah, they look like that. They're just they're really bad. They look real bad. Um, there, you're right. There have been some really good spring training hats. My all time faves are uh, the A's green hat. White silhouetted elephant. Elephant, Ooh. just the very elephant, yeah. very classy. And then when the Rockies went to that spring training logo, which I'm pretty sure they still use, which is the Rockies logo, but with the text gotten rid of, and then the and then inside the mountains is just the Colorado State flag. Perfect. I think they use they might have used that for their City Connects last year too. But uh, those those hats were good. Uh, but really, ever since they went to the the soft back that is different, and now they're yeah. mesh. It's just, why it, isn't the hat just the same all around? And I think, too, uh, you brought up that one picture that they shared of, like, that weird White Sox hat that they picked. Uh, it was, like, MLB.com picked out, like, uh, it was, like, Yeah, this th- was some Twitter hats. thing the other day, um, yeah. And I think they used the 2022 White Sox hat that had, like, black on black. Um, they did, they never looking wore at that, it right though. Now, but I think they used the spring training hat, because I'm just looking at it. I think that's the But the, the spring one training used. hat was the Batterman logo. For 2022? From last Can't year? Can't find last a batter yeah. man. <laughs> Thank you, song. Eddie. Mm-hmm. Eddie's oh, no. rolling in his grave right now. Still alive? Hey, hey, hey. hey. Don't Eddie Vedder's still alive. Are you sure? <laughs> After that song? <laughs> After that it. rendition by the Lord? Killed Eddie Vedder. <laughs> Goodness put that gracious. Out in the <laughs> Um, well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I know it wasn't the uh, most upper of a show, uh, but uh, need to let you know when it is White Sox news, uh, When what's the ongoing uh, situation. Uh, that is Vinny Duber. You could read his latest writings at uh, allchgo.com. You can follow him on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. Um, he's got that piece for diehards uh, about where he explores his record collection and uh, basically lines up a record for each player. Uh, very enjoyable on the lighter side of stuff. And then uh, also the hard-hitting uh, journalism, the capital J journalism that you went to Mizzou for uh, about Aloy playing in the outfield. Yes, this is what <laughs> this is. I took I took how to break down a player who wants to play right field 101. In journalism <laughs> school at the University of Missouri. And now it's paying off. Yes. Uh, that's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter at Eckermall23. Enjoying a lovely Goose Island. Uh, if you are looking to close the night out with a lovely <laughs> beverage. Only 6.8. Honk it out. Hazy beer, beer hug. Delicious. Only 6.8. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> There's other ones that they make that if you want to get right. Hey, baby. Bourbon some, County some, Stout. Let's some go. Some nines, yeah. some tens, some elevens. Nice. I think, I think the Bourbon County one is 11. Like I think the secret, the five the secret beer five. hug I had the other day on, on set. I looked at it middle of the show. I was like, 9%. Ooh, we're, we're, getting, we're doing work over here. Five. to take the bus home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> five, 5.5 5 for the Golden, Perfect. 5 for the Blackhawks, and then 4.2 for the uh, the Bulls one. And uh, the Blackhawks and Bulls ones are limited edition, so make sure you head out to uh, maybe a Benny's, uh, maybe a, a Goose Island uh, place. They have two locations go as well. Go to the tap room right uh, there. Go to the Fulton. tap room, the brew house, uh, but also, you know, hey, just buy it at a, a local grocery store. That one on Clyburn's pretty nice, too. I've that been there too. a few times. It is, it yeah. is very Old nice. Old school. Uh, Man, that's been... That's one of the OGs. I've been there a few times. Law. Yeah, I bet too. you have too. Oh yeah. We we like the tap room. And that's where we had the the shoot. But I, I know the uh, the other one has like more food. 
they options, have food, yeah. a little bit more yeah. of a hangout spot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you know, if you're on the north side, if you're on the west side, you can get your you can get your goose anywhere. Check it out. Did we get uh, Who's Your Daddy super chat? I want to make sure we got uh, all that. If we just want to clear that out, uh, thank you for the reminder, Who's Your Daddy. Uh, we appreciate all you guys for uh, hanging out with us in the chat. Uh, we really do appreciate all the support. And if you do want to become a diehard, uh, check out allchgo.com. Uh, there's his super chat. Uh, tell Aloy he might play a little outfield and he'll get into and stay in great shape. Uh, I've never really seen that he's never really seemed out of shape. I just think that's his body. Uh, people think, you know, look at a little flab on you, you're, you're out of shape. That's just, you know, sometimes you can just have a little flab. Also, I've never seen that he's flabby. I mean, also, I, as somebody who is flabby, I would not call Aloy Jimenez trust flabby. Me. Yes, that is very correct. Yes. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Also, guys, remember, it's baseball. Like, they don't all need to look like wide receivers. Well, and also, he's, like, <laughs> wears pretty loose clothing. Yeah. Like, he's not, like, wearing, I don't know, I don't know. it's, it's, hey, know, whatever. If he was, if, if he was if he wasn't uh, keeping it, keeping it trim, he wouldn't have that uh, button down all the way to his navel. Yeah, right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the taco meat showing. So, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. It uh-huh. is Taco Tuesday. Uh, sorry, Hoosier, I missed that. Uh, thanks for the reminder. And good. thank you for the Super Chat. Thank you to Lawrence Benedetto for producing this show today. Um, and we will wrap it up. We'll be with you tomorrow at 4 p.m. here live on the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. And, hey, if this is your first time watching, make sure you subscribe. We're over 24,000, which means the next milestone, 25,000. Jim it? Tomey number. Hey, Jim Tomey. Yeah. Coming up. Uh, leaving... Can we name a 24 off the top of our head for, a, for the White Joe Sox? Creedy. Oh, Joe Creedy. Joe yeah. Creedy. Mercy. There you go. Uh, so here we go. Junior. Joe Creedy yeah. to, uh, to Jim Tomey. Uh, thank you, everybody, for supporting us. Uh, thank you to Who's Your Daddy for the Super Chat, Stefan Bardo for the Super Chat. And then you know well. 26,000. That's the Avi, that's the Avi number. That's, that's the, the big one. Oh, I thought we were doing Odu Tell. And 27, Josh Fields? Was he, was he 27? I think he was 27. Um, Lucas Giolito. Oh, that, that works, too. <laughs> that works, too. I think Josh Fields might have been 28, so then we can continue it. There I think we're go. not going to get to 29. That's anyways, Leary. I'm hungry. Uh, oh, is that Leary? 28? 26. Leary's 28. No, 28. What 40. the hell, Sean? Come on, man. Leary, tw- yeah, he's in the lineup every day. You should yeah. know that. Yeah. Okay. Should know that. That, that's on me. 29 uh, Blackjack McDowell. Jeff Margo. 30, Dirty Swerty. Uh, dirt, dirty, yeah, dirty. Dirty, Dirty, Nick Swisher. Dirty, 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 Maglio. dirty Swerty. O-E-O. O-E-O, uh, O-E-O Maglio. All right, we're wrapping this up. Uh, <laughs> Esteban Loaz is 31. Uh, that's what you do. That's Lawrence. I'm Sean Anderson. Goodbye. <laughs>